this episode, we'd like to go over with you the importance of setting up your workspace and lighting. These two factors can play a huge role in preparing you for success in your creative process. First, establish your workspace. Are you working on a wall, an easel, a table, the floor? Each of these spaces are conducive to painting, but we recommend a wall or easel. While working on the wall or an easel, you can easily move around your painting, change the orientation of the canvas, and give yourself more space for viewing, critiquing, and editing your work. Lighting plays a huge factor in how your work will appear when creating it. This sounds like a given, but let me briefly explain. You want to find a place to work with consistent neutral lighting, avoiding direct or harsh lighting because direct or harsh lighting will alter how your paint colors appear in your studio space and when you move your work outside your studio. Sometimes the results can be shocking. Lights are rated in temperature or Kelvin, which means a lower temperature gives off a warmer glow and a higher temperature gives off a cooler glow. We'll go more into lighting in a future episode, but for now, we just want you to find a place that is consistently lit. Keeping your workspace organized is essential. You'll want to remember the difference between your coffee cup and your paint cup. Keep valuables such as jewelry and electronics away from your area. A set of comfortable clothes you don't mind getting messy with paint is advised. We also recommend gloves and an apron. Just no fancy suits or birthday suits. When working on a wall, you'll need to use tape. What you don't want to do is to only tape the corners. You want to create a full border around the paper. Thinking ahead, when you remove the tape from your finished painting, a clean white border looks much better than four unfinished corners. The way to do this is to first lay your paper down on a clean surface. Then roll bits of tape on the two top corners. After you've done this, hang your paper on the wall and take a step back. Does it look straight? If so, you can now tape off the borders. Make sure to do it so you have even margins on all four sides. As you start learning how to analyze the art you make, you have to consider every part of the painting, and this includes every edge and corner. In other words, you wouldn't be able to ignore four unaddressed areas. Once you're finished painting for the day, you'll want to take care to properly clean up. This will vary whether working with acrylics or oils. With acrylics, your first step is to get the excess paint off the brush. Use a towel to wipe the paint off the brush and then thoroughly rinse it in water. You don't want to dispose of your paint down the drain because it will dry and clog your pipes. It's liquid plastic. The fish don't like it, the pipes don't like it, and your mom doesn't like it. If you painted with oils, start by wiping off as much paint from the brush as possible with a rag. Next, wash your brush in the paint thinner. You'll want to have a separate container for the paint thinner you use to clean your brush. A simple used pasta sauce jar will work, or you could check out the ones available at an art store. Remember, you don't need to throw away your paint thinner after each use. Depending how often you paint, this can last you several months. Now, once the brush is pretty clean, you can use some soap on the bristles of the brush to get them extra clean. It's good studio practice to take good care of your brushes. Now for our segment. Art Soul. Welcome to our segment, Art Soul, where the three of us pick a topic and talk about it. Today, I'm your host, Mustafa, and to my right is Polo, and to my left is Brett. We'll have Polo go first. Okay, we're talking about things that we wish we knew when starting out as artists. And I think the first thing for me going into this is that I hate spending money and I hate spending money on stuff that I'm not even gonna use. When you are starting out, it's really important that you just focus on the most basic of things, like that list that we gave you. And even then, the cheapest version of the most basic of things. Because you might really enjoy something or you might not really enjoy something. And that way you can explore freely without feeling guilty about spending so much money on it. Another good tip is um, I like to dress comfortably. <laughs> so make sure that whatever clothes that you're wearing, they will get messy. Um, don't wear your nicest stuff when you're creating because it kind of inhibits you and doesn't let you create or paint or get messy. And um, a really good practice for artists is to not have any distractions. Um, so just have a, a set of paint clothes that are raggedy and old that you can get really messy and, and painty and you won't have to worry about it. Brett, what are your thoughts? Uh, I guess starting out giving advice to um, someone trying to get into painting or art, 
is to be mindful of their own practice and, and really try and pay attention. When do you like to work? Are you a morning worker, uh, middle of the day, evening, a night owl? Um, and then you know, what are some things that you, you notice about yourself when you work? Um, you know, perhaps there's certain topics or themes that keep reappearing in your work or certain things you like to continually paint. Um, be mindful of those because then that's kind of how you take advantage and, and build your own practice. I know in my own um, experience, uh, I was definitely uh, kind of work best middle of the day. Uh, I'd get into the studio in the morning, work kind of normal business hours, I guess I would call it, um, and, and then, you know, leave the studio and make sure to, to leave my, I, I guess, the, the art at the studio, not take it with me. That way, every time I was at the studio, I knew to get my mindset into art mode. Yeah, don't take um, your work home with you, right? Yeah, you know, I, I think it's really easy to do as an artist, because, I, I mean, you see, being a visual artist, you see so much and so many things in, inspire you. Um, so it's good to take note of that, but you do want to kind of detach. And I found detaching really let me focus better in the studio. Um, and on that note, how long are you able to paint or focus, mm -hmm. I think is important. Uh, for me, I was able to be in the studio and I could focus for two, three hours at a time before even needing a break. Where I know some people, it was like 15 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> Max for me, yeah. I needed like nobody around. I'm like the opposite I think of you. Mm -hmm. Like no one around, jam, blast my music, and then nothing else to distract mm -hmm. me because I would just be completely taken off track yeah. if I'm not, you know, yeah. in my own little bubbles. So. But it, it's important to, to realize that mm -hmm. because then you, you know how you work best. And when you know how you work best, you maximize your time in the studio because, um, you know, a lot of times, especially outside of school, you'll find that the time you have to spend in the studio is very limited. So you do want to maximize your time when you're able to create. Yeah, and I would say for me, I only worked in small, just bursts of of just I would have just this energy and I'd be able to paint for like an hour or two hours but and I would get a lot of a lot done within that time but I would need a like a, some a break I would need a break after that little burst of energy and that's what's just really important to take note here is just so we all work differently and we we all are going to approach this with a very different process based on our personal habits but another thing I'd like to touch upon is Lighting. Lighting for me was was such a strong thing that I did not consider enough when I started painting. Um, when I would take my homework home, I would be painting in a garage with this, this really dim lighting um, that was just super, super warm. Um, and then I would take that work back to school, that homework, and I would look at it in the studio with all of this lighting. And there was just barely any like value range. There was no contrast. Uh, if I was using colors in the paints, they didn't look accurate to what I was trying to go for. So these are really important things to consider and they, they are really simple, but when you're first starting out, you don't really think about them. That's like when you go to a department store and the clothes make you look good in the mirror and then you get home and you're like, this is ugly, <laughs> I look awful. So just make sure that you're trying to replicate that like professional lighting or just consistent lighting as you're making it because then you won't feel disappointed when you hang it up in the classroom or wherever it is that you're showing And yourself. even that being said though, you're gonna find you're never gonna have enough yeah. lighting ever. Yeah, that's true. But you know, do the best you can to, to make sure, I think it's consistent to where you're gonna show it. Um, I, I think maybe um, crucial there is, you know, if, if you're not going to have good light in the gallery, then, you know, maybe you don't need as much good light in the studio. But um, I would say most galleries are pretty well lit. Any, any, you know, space you show it outside your home. So try and get something that is close where it's not going to be a huge um, shock when you see it under the other lights. Well, thanks for joining us on another episode of Masters of the Paint Universe. If you like this episode, please hit like, subscribe, and ring the bell for notifications. If you did not like this episode, um, well, please hit like anyway. We're desperate. We're desperate. Okay, bye!
Take one. Explain the cleaning up process with oils. I literally don't know it, so you just have to fill it in this part. <laughs> Brett! I finished Dune. Sorry. Uh -huh. I saw that. I, that was on my to-do list on my days off, and I have not picked up the book yet. Your to-do list? <laughs> <laughs> not on... Wait. What? Sorry. Take two, action. Take three, action. Take six, action. Welcome to our segment, Art Soul, where the three of us pick a topic and this- <laughs> He said it again. No, I'm saying soul! I Why am saying it. Art Soul. 